All right, guys. Well, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you once again today. So for this one, we are going to do something a little bit different. And this actually came on the back of a suggestion by my friend Adam of Mersey Beers. So you may have seen recently that uh, BBC Scotland did a documentary as part of their Disclosure series on Brewdog and the truth about Brewdog. Now, those of you that have watched my channel for a long time, um, my channel incidentally was established back in July of 2013. Um, those of you who've watched the channel for a long time will know that um, I studied chemistry at Aberdeen and I was there when Brewdog were kind of just taking off, if you like. I think it was 2011, if I remember rightly, that they opened their first bar. In, uh, in Aberdeen, the flagship one next to Marshall College. So, you know, I've seen Brewdog from the very, very early days. So watching this documentary was really quite interesting, actually. If you go back to 2017, I actually made a video sharing my thoughts on Brewdog at the time. And to be honest, I can't remember what they did that spurred me to make that video at that particular time. But I'll put the link to it in the video description below. And you can have a look at that for yourselves. But um, yeah, basically, uh, I watched this uh, documentary, The Truth About Brewdog, and Adam suggested that I do an update and share my thoughts on it, which I thought was a really good idea. So a big thank you to Adam for uh, suggesting that to me, because otherwise I probably would have just watched it and been like, well, I'm not surprised. So uh, yeah, that's that. So yeah, what we'll do in this video then is I will go through, I made some notes when I was watching the documentary about things, you know, points of discussion. So we'll go through that. I've got my computer here so that I don't forget anything and uh, I'll share my thoughts on it and then give you my overall thought on Brewdog as an organisation. So um, yeah, this documentary was done by BBC Scotland, part of their Disclosure series, and I thought it was quite well done, actually. But uh, yeah, let's go on and go through the first points of it then. So um, the documentary starts off with uh, the guy talking about James Watt's book and the sort of advice that he gives in this. So yeah, he says in the book, be selfish, don't take advice, and you know, why spend your own money when you can spunk someone else's? Now, yeah, some folk might argue that this whole thing is kind of meant to be tongue in cheek and it's meant to be cheeky, which has always been part of the, the brew dog image. But you know, if you have shareholders in the company and you are the boss of a company, the, that employs people and gives them their livelihood, surely you should have a little bit more kind of, you know, humility and look at sustainability of the business and things like this, you know, instead of going on about wasting other people's money. But yeah, um, there was the other thing, the first thing, the next part of the documentary really went on to talk about, you know, Brewdog's marketing. And, and I've spoken about this before. I don't really like Brewdog's marketing. I think it's just... Uh, it's just a bit, it's, I don't know if crass is the right word, but it just it just kind of rubs me up the wrong way. I just can't be bothered with it. It's, it's clickbaity, basically. I, I could never be arsed with clickbait. And Brewdog's marketing for me has always been clickbaity. As you might have guessed, back in the early days, I was very enthusiastic about Brewdog because they were doing some very, very nice beers. But the quality of their beer over time has deteriorated. Bar some of the dark beers, I would say that. Um, that's another thing, though. But yeah. Um, I gradually got tired of Brewdog over the years because of this whole clickbaity marketing kind of shite that they were doing. But uh, yeah, the first thing it talked about was the beer made on an aeroplane. But there are staff members, of former staff members of Brewdog saying that no, the beer actually was brewed in Ellen. So again, this is a whole marketing stunt. Uh, there was also the thing about the Elvis name changing thing, the Elvis Presley estate um, you know, tried to sue Brewdog for the use of the name Elvis Juice. So what they did was they said, oh, we're all changing our names to uh, to Elvis within the company. And at the end, it was only James Watt and Martin Dickey who did this. But um, they were going on. There was some sort of confusion between Scots law and English law here. For those of you watching, um, Scotland has an independent judiciary uh, of England. That was part of the Treaty of Union. So Scots law is pretty much separate from uh, from English law. 
in this sense, although there is a British Supreme Court which oversees the two. But yeah, they were going on about how um, there was a uh, there was a thing here where they were saying, oh, if it, they couldn't officially change their name unless it was posted in the through a deed poll in the London Gazette. But they were the the excuse that Brewdog gave was some, was a loophole through kind of Scots law sort of thing. Um, I'm not a legal expert. I could ask my dad and sister about this because they are both lawyers. And they could no doubt explain it to me. But yeah, they were saying they used some things saying that, oh, in Scots law, you can change your name without posting it in deed poll or whatever. So yeah, that was something that they, they did and they used this. So the whole Elvis juice and changing the name to Elvis thing was um, half fake. Uh, half of it was kind of fake and half of it was sort of marketing. So yeah, this was another market bullshit sort of thing. Um, the one that really got me, though, that was quite interesting was the lost forest and this this really for me this one kind of um epitomizes the sort of hypocrisy that brewdog engage in these days so they own land in the highlands and they promised they promised to plant trees on this they paid something like 10 or 11 million pounds for this land in the highlands and they were saying that what they were going to do was um use this uh land they were going to use the profits from uh, selling lost lager to plant trees in this land. There was like a certain amount of money from each packet or each box of this stuff sold was going to be used to plant trees. Now, the interesting thing was that apparently Brewdog applied for a grant of money from the Scottish government to the sum of £1.3 million rather than using the profits from lost lager. So, yeah, there you go. Um, they're wanting the taxpayer to foot a bill for something they said they were going to do themselves. Again, I can only shake my head at that. You know, it's just this whole marketing bullshit. Brewdog, um, I'm not, you know, I'm not surprised. I'm really not, I'm not surprised at all at this. But it just kind of shows you how full of shit they are, basically. They, they really are full of shit. Um, so, yeah, trying to get the Scottish taxpayer to pay for their supposedly for their idea and their scheme that they can do themselves. It's not you helping the planet, Brewdog. It's the Scottish taxpayer that you wanted to fund this. So, yeah, well done for that. Um, the other thing that was really interesting that came up after this, it went into quite, the documentary went into quite some detail on the Equity for Punks sort of um, thing. And uh, this I found this really quite interesting. I've done a good little bit of investing myself in recent times, you know, uh, ETF sort of funds, index funds, uh, and a little bit of cryptocurrency and stuff like this. So I've been learning a lot about economics over the last little while. So the whole equity for punks thing, I thought, was uh, really quite interesting. I never bought shares in Brewdog, incidentally. I remember the first um, crowdfunding exercise that they did, but I never bought into it. So um, the big thing, of course, with Brewdog was, um, and I think this might, have, might, this might well have been what spurred me to do the video in 2017. I can't remember the timeline that well, but they sold 25% of their shares to TSG, a consumer group. And if I remember rightly, they were quite heavily involved with Pabst Blue Ribbon. So again, this reeks of hypocrisy. You know, uh, Brewdog gave Lagunitas and uh, Beavertown shit for selling a chunk of their business uh, to, I remember, I think Beavertown went to Heineken. I can't remember who Lagunitas went to right enough. But yeah, they said, oh, we're not selling Lagunitas in our bars anymore. We're not selling Beavertown in our bars. Brewdog went and did exactly the same. Uh, in fairness, Mikeler and I believe Evil Twin are owned by certain uh, investment fund groups. There are there is a big portion, twenty five percent or something like that is of Mikeler is owned by one of these groups as well. But still, you know, you can't really go about saying you're going to ban certain breweries from your bars when you go and just do the same thing yourself. Once again, sheer hypocrisy from Brewdog and particularly James Watt. But we'll get back to James Watt in a minute. But basically, when they sold 25% of the company to TSG, James Watt and Martin Dickey, the two founders, got £100 million between them, apparently. So these guys are, to put it mildly, filthy rich. Make it that what you will. But the thing was, after this, and I like the way the documentary went about this, um, they said, uh, it went. they asked for more crowdfunding pretty much right after this. So... The punks or the equity holders, the shareholders, the regular punter apparently were paying £23 a share, which is when you calculate it out is double what TSG paid 
for their uh, for their shares. But this also created a new type of share, and it basically meant that if Brewdog didn't meet an 18% growth target per year, the shortfall would be gained, if I've understood it correctly, by diluting the value of the shareholder shares, and this means that TSG will take more control of the business, but obviously it protects James Watt and Martin Dickey's state in the company, or stake, I should say, not state. Um, so yeah, they've basically screwed over all the people who have helped them with their infrastructure investments over the years. So again, that's a very moral business decision, Brewdog. Well done. You know, uh, I say Brewdog, but I think it is more down to James Watt. Again, we'll come back to James Watt in a minute. So, yeah, um, you know, this whole equity for punk sort of thing, it's just, it, it seems almost a little bit like a kind of pyramid scheme or something like this. You know, it, it seems that it's um, it's just, it's been loaded from the beginning. And James Watt has gone and just screwed over all the people that have supported Brewdog in a business over the years. Because, yeah, if they don't meet these targets which obviously during the course of the COVID pandemic would be questionable whether they were going to do that. Um, they've basically allowed this um, corporation to come in and dilute the shares of their shareholders. And, you know, Brewdog are supposed to be punk. They're supposed to be against big business and things like this. So, yeah, once again, that's a load of shite. There we go. Um, there was also the revelation that James Watt um, owns uh, half a million pounds of Heineken shares. Now, I don't know if whether this is true or not. Um, who knows? But um, it's quite funny. If it is true, that is just completely funny. And once again, it's the whole uh, hypocrisy element that goes on there. And, you know, again, that goes back to what we were saying about Beavertown and Lagunitas earlier. They banned them from the Brewdog bars because of um you know because of them selling out to big groups but yeah james watt owns heineken shares <laughs> okay right uh, but then after this point the documentary kind of moved over to america a little bit and uh well it, 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 there was a little bit in scotland there was a little bit in america but um, it started talking about the treatment of their workers in particularly women so, yeah, there was the whole thing with the punks for purpose, the open letter, talking about the, the culture of fear that existed within Brewdog. James Watt, of course, pleaded that he was, uh, proclaimed that he was blissfully unaware of all these uh, these issues and things that were going on. But there's quite a lot of evidence and there's many, many people saying that he was more implicit in this. And again, that doesn't surprise me. It really doesn't. So... Um, the thing with the US side of the business, of course, and this is different from Europe, the US side of the business would offer benefits to their staff to attract them, you know, health care, dental care, all of this kind of thing. But, you know, it seems that when people went into the, into this uh, business, there was a whole revolving door of people, you know, and there was a big culture of fear surrounding James Watt. Basically, when he went to America, he treated these trips over there like vacations. So one of the really interesting things about this, though, was that... Uh, Brewdog, uh, for the when they were opening up their dog tap in um, near Columbus or is it Cleveland? I forget in Ohio anyway. Uh, when they were opening up their dog tap bar, the brewery that they had there wasn't actually operational. So what they did was they were importing their beers from Scotland over to the U.S. Now one of the big things in the U.S. with imports apparently is that you have to properly declare the full ingredients in the beer. So two beers in particular, Elvis Juice, which has a bunch of grapefruit and orange extracts in it, and then um, Jet Black Heart, which I think has some of these kind of cakey sort of flavour essences in them that Omnipoyo use. Um, those were omitted from the import uh, things, uh, from the import forms that were given to the US authorities. Now, this is interesting because... Um, when the BBC contacted the US, uh, I forget, what was it the TTIV or something like that it was called, uh, but when they contacted the US agency that was looking at this, they, um, how do you say, they, um, the, the, the agency was saying that, yeah, these things were, you know, they were not declared. There's a statute of limitations, though, on th uh, for three years. That means that they can't pursue Brewdog for this and they also can't pursue a foreign business. But what it did actually do was put the import license of Shelton Brothers at risk. So Brewdog and in particular James Watt, again, 
has potentially put another company at very serious risk because of his own arseholery, basically. That's what he's done. Um, those of you who are into the, the kind of geeky side of craft beer will know that Shelton Brothers, they're a massive importer of European craft beers to America. Um, they take a lot of Mikeler stuff, um, various different European craft stuff, they take it over to America. They're one of the biggest import companies for European craft beer into the States. So yeah, Brewdog um, could have put the import license of Shelton Brothers at risk and they could have lost, uh, that basically could have lost them their business. So again, <laughs> Brewdog, what the fuck are you doing? It's just, it's actually ridiculous the amount of stuff um, that's surrounding this company now. It's, it's, it's insane. Um, then the documentary after this went on to talk about the inappropriate interactions of James Watt in particular with uh, customers in the US. Uh, there was an incident of uh, him going up on uh, a roof. I forget which premises this was, but he went up on the roof with a woman and was uh, making out with her apparently. This was seen on CCT camera, uh, CCTV cameras by a number of staff, yet he uh, fervently denies this. Um, obviously, he's, he's the guy's married. James Watt is married to um, uh, a, an illustrator, a Scottish illustrator. Her name's Johanna something, if I remember rightly. So yeah, he is married to that. So this is obviously, uh, there seems to be quite strong evidence that he did this, and obviously he's trying to protect this so that he's to protect the relationship with his wife, which is understandable in a sense, but the basic moral of the story is don't be an arsehole and do things like that. But yeah, he was also apparently doing things like taking women, uh, you know, young women in their 20s on private tours of the brewery. I think, if I remember rightly, James Watts about 45, something like that. He's around that kind of age. So yeah, taking, you know, 20-year-old women around tours of the brewery and stuff like this is a bit, you know, it's a little bit kind of uh, sleazy in a lot of ways. Um, but yeah, there's a, there's testimony from quite a few like managers and supervisors in the documentary um, that they were saying they were actively scheduling, uh, making their schedule so that female staff would either avoid days where James Watt was going to be in their premises or making sure that there were other male presences there when James Watt was about. So there is, again, a very big kind of culture of fear and misogyny surrounding this guy. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's... In some ways, you know, I will say the whole thing with the misogyny element is kind of surprising in a way because um, I, I met James Watt on a few occasions and I'll be honest and say when I met him, from his manner, he was, he, I thought, I didn't think he was straight. I didn't, there's nothing. And, you know, obviously uh, that's, it doesn't matter whether somebody's straight or not, but I didn't think he was. So this whole thing... Um, I, I was I was quite surprised that I'll be honest with that I didn't think he was straight when I met him so having this whole thing where he's been uh, a Casanova if you like I was I was quite surprised by that to be honest with you but um, yeah um, this it's it's one of these things now um, it, it's a big topic obviously women in the workplace and um, it's not these kind of things have been it's been noted with Mikula in recent times uh, there was the whole thing with founders um, treating their black employees not very nicely over in America as well. So this seems to be a big problem, in, not just in the, the brewing industry, but because of the kind of nature of the brewing industry. There's a lot of, you know, a lot of people that are in the brewing industry that lean to the left on their politics. So this is kind of a, an industry where these things are going to be called out a lot more kind of readily than they would necessarily in industries such as the banking sector and stuff like that. So yeah, you have to keep this in mind as well. But, you know, it seems to be that there's... Um, there's there's um, a whole array of evidence. There's a there's a there's a there's plentiful evidence against James Watt for this behaviour, but he seems to be so. I, th I the thing with him is I think he's so much driven by ego that I think to put his hands up and say that he'd, he'd misbehaved. Uh, in this way, I think it would be a major loss of face for him. In a lot of ways, you know, it kind of it reminds me of a lot of the stuff that goes on with the Chinese Communist Party just now. You know, this whole thing they they won't admit that this that, that the virus originated in Wuhan because it's a loss of face. A lot of that uh, there's a lot of parallels I think to be drawn there with James Watt at the moment. You know, it's um there is, it's a whole kind of cult of personality sort of thing. Kim Kim Jong Jim maybe. That's probably a good way to do it. Kim Jong-un, Kim Jong-jim. There you go. But um, yeah, it's there's 
so much evidence there and there's so many people speaking out against him now. His back's against the wall. Um, it really is. And I don't think there's much that he can do other than step away from Brewdog. But again, I very much doubt that his ego would allow him to do that. Um, but yeah, that's basically everything that was kind of covered in the documentary. Now, the interesting thing, of course, about the documentary is that it really seemed, it really did seem to focus on James Watt. And um, I met, as I said, I've met James Watt twice, and this was back in the early days of um, of Brewdog. This was in like, you know, sort of when they were opening up their bar in Aberdeen, which was like 2010, 2011, something like that. I met him and I met Martin Dickey on the open night of this sort of thing. And this was just when I was getting into beer, of course. So, um, yeah, I did meet him. And the thing a lot of people should realise about James Watt is that he comes from a family of means. His family were fairly wealthy, from what I understand. He studied law and economics at the University of Edinburgh. And, um, yeah, when you meet him, he, you know, I, I talked with Rob Hopsin about this as well. You know, he doesn't really, he, he holds his, he always has a drink in his hand. He goes around. He's a very kind of, in a lot of ways, he'll come across as a very quiet guy. But then when he's asked to speak, He's full of buzzwords. He's a very buzzwordy kind of guy. And, you know, a lot of this marketing shite that comes from Prudog is James Watt. You know, he goes on about being the captain of the ship and things. James Watt is an extremely buzzwordy kind of person. He's, um, to, you know, he's, in fairness to him, the guy, when it comes to our marketing side of things, he's a genius. You know, look at how well-known Brewdog are throughout the world. He's, he's succeeded. He has succeeded with his marketing thing. But... It's the question that there's not really much integrity there, I don't think. You know, it's all about, it's money, 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 push, push, push. It's all about this thing with James Watt. So he's a very buzzwordy character, um, not a lot of integrity, really. Um, James, uh, you know, Martin Dickey, though, on the other hand, I did meet Martin Dickey. Um, basically, James Watt was the business side of things. Martin Dickey was the brewer. Martin Dickey is a far more down-to-earth character than... Um, than James Watt ever was. If I remember rightly, Martin Dickey studied in the brewing and distilling programme at Harriet Watt University, also in Edinburgh. And um, I think they were, if I remember, I think they were kind of like childhood friends, if you like. So, yeah. But if I was Martin Dickey and I'm seeing this behaviour from a childhood friend and, you know, tarnishing a business that, you know, he really helped to build, I wouldn't be silent on this. I honestly think that Brewdog would do a lot better if James Watt fucked off and Martin Dickey took the reins. I think having a more humble attitude as Martin Dickey has would do the company um, a lot better. And again, I, you know, uh, I only say this because I've been reading a lot about China and stuff recently. But, you know, it's this whole thing. China refuses to admit that they made mistakes in the, the whole COVID-19 sort of thing because it would be a loss of face. James Watt does the same. He's just denying, denying, denying everything. And as soon as this documentary was made public, he goes on Twitter and says, oh, I have now been reluctantly forced to take action, to take legal action against the BBC to protect my reputation. And you're just like, well, that looks good, James, doesn't it? They offered, they stated quite clearly in it, they offered to interview you and you refused. <laughs> you know, you're going to hide behind lawyers. You've done this a million times, man. You know, you've done that. You hide behind lawyers, you hide behind buzzwords. James Watt, the best thing you can do is just is be a silent partner in Brewdog. Let Martin Dickey take over. Just do that. The guy has a lot more integrity than you. You've shown yourself up for just to be not a very good person, to be quite honest with you. Um, and it flies in the face of a lot of the, the a lot of the stuff that you put out there about Brewdog, James. Has you have undermined it from the very beginning. If you do one Heineken shares, which you're never going to admit and everybody knows you're never going to admit that because it would be terrible for uh, the company's reputation. Um, you've just you, you've just shown yourself up to be an absolute hypocrite, honestly. Um, and to be honest, when I, as I say, when I met James Watt, um, I'm not, I'm surprised at the extent of it. I think that's fair to say. I'm surprised at the extent of it and the misogyny thing. I will say about that. I was surprised about that. But other than that, you know, I'm not surprised on everything else. The extent of it and the misogyny side, yes. Otherwise, no. Um, and I, again, we'll go back to 
when I was studying at Aberdeen and Brewdog were very new on the scene, they were very exciting, you know, Dogma, Hardcore IPA, those were two of my, if you could get those in the original form, those would be two of my favourite class yeah, craft beers ever, the nostalgia factors I've talked about many times on the channel. But uh, yeah, you know, there was various things, you, you heard various things um, on the grapevine, if you like, uh, around Aberdeen about Brewdog. So um, I mentioned it in other videos, my sister, uh, used to work in the non-emergency call centre uh, for the police at Bucksburn in Aberdeen. And uh, I remember her telling me um, that the emergency services, the fire service, the ambulance service, the police service and so on, they approached Brewdog to ask them to do, uh, to give like a, a, a free brewery tour to each of the three services, um, you know, for somebody, just for a charity sort of thing, a raffle kind of thing. And Brewdog wouldn't do it. And, you know, here are the punks of beer not willing to help out the emergency services. Go figure. Yeah. Um, they also, the other thing that really rubbed me up the wrong way with Brewdog was how they tried to bully Aberdeenshire Council. Because there was a plot of land next to the brewery in Ellen that they wanted to buy for, I think it was for the overworks. And the council said, no, no, this is this particular piece of land is I think it was to be a cemetery or something like this. It was plotted to be an extension of the cemetery. So they said, no, this has been, I think it had been set for about 30 or 40 years that this thing was to be a cemetery. And they said, we'll sell you this land on the other side of the brewery instead. What James Watt did was he took to social media and tried to get people to bully, you know, he basically tried to tarnish Aberdeenshire Council to get them to, uh, to change their mind. And regardless of party, affiliations I mean you guys watching the channel will know I'm a big Scottish independence man and so on but anyway regardless of party affiliations I don't know who would be in power in Aberdeenshire Council at that time anyway but trying to bully the local council that's no very punk that is not very punk at all and it's James Watt it, it kind of is another piece of evidence against James Watt it shows him abusing his position and um, thinking because he is all powerful he can get away with it you know he'll get all these international people to uh, to bombard Aberdeenshire Council for not letting them expand their brewery. James, grow the fuck up. Honestly. Um, it's, it stinks of narcissism. It really does. Um, you know, just... You think the world revolves around you. Um, you know, Aberdeenshire Council... They're not going to bend. Uh, and I applaud them. I applaud them for telling you to get to fuck. Really, I really do applaud them for telling you where to go. Um, so yeah that was disgraceful it was the way that they tried to bully Aberdeenshire Council was um, was was appalling really um, so yeah that, that was the other thing that really rubbed me up the wrong way about Brewdog back in the day um, so yeah and there's various other things I mean there was the Lone Wolf Distillery sort of thing there was the whole thing about sending uh, the I forget what the name of that Putin beer was sending a crate of that to the Kremlin for Vladimir Putin and so on. You know, the whole uh, Brewdog have really just shown themselves to be a company of zero integrity. And as I said earlier, the thing with Brewdog was back in the day, you know, the original punk IPA, the hardcore IPA, the, the, the 5 a.m. Um, the, the 5 a.m. Saint, those were really cracking beers. You know, I had some very, very good beers from Brewdog uh, back in the day. Um, and over time, the quality of the beer has just gone down, down, down. Now, that might well be because there are other breweries in Scotland, such as Tempest, Vault City, Overtone, to name but a few, who have, you know, upped the, the quality. But in fairness, I would say the dark beers at Brewdog have, um, have you know, stayed at a relatively good quality. But it's the light beers that have really gone down the pan. Um, so, yeah. Quality of Brewdog's beer, it should be, you know, the thing was, a good brewery will let the, the quality of the beer do the talking. Um, and, you know, the thing is with Lag, if you go back to Lagunitas again, the quality of their beer has stayed pretty solid, actually. You have to say that. Um, since Heineken got involved with them, their, uh, the quality of their beer has stayed um, pretty solid in a lot of ways. Or was it Avian? I forget which company it was. But yeah, anyway, uh, Brewdog could have let the quality of their beer do the talking, but the quality of their beer has gone down and down. And a lot of that, I wonder, it was perhaps due to uh, Stuart Bowman leaving the company. There was also a German brewer there, Franz, and I'm not sure whether he is still involved in the company, but those two were the kind of original brew team. I think uh, uh, Stuart Bowman is now involved with one of the big distilling companies in Scotland. But anyway, so uh, yeah, um, 
the quality of the beer has just gone down and down. The dark beer, in fairness, has stayed pretty decent. But, um, yeah, um, I used to be really into that when they did the voting. People could vote for the beers and so on. And back in the day, I did think it was really innovative. Uh, a lot of the, the kind of the way they were doing the crowdfunding and stuff like that. But now that there's all these revelations about them undermining their shareholders and stuff like that, you just have to shake your head at it. It's not surprising. James Watt, if you met him, he was always a guy who was driven by money. He's not stupid. He's a very calculated person. And if you meet him face to face, you'll kind of see that with him. You will actually see that with him. Um yeah, so uh, the the thing for me as well with this is that Martin Dickey has stayed pretty much silent. Um, is he biding his time to just go and to go and take over? Who knows? Um, but I think that is the best route forward for Brudo. The best thing is for James Watt to basically retire into the shadows, be a silent partner. He's made his money. He's set for life. Um. The best thing that could happen for Brewdog is, is is that he steps back and Martin Dickey takes the reins. Uh, Martin Dickey, much more humble guy, straightforward. That would do the company well. I mean, the thing is, um, there was parts in this documentary that were talking about uh, people that were involved in the Equity for Punk scheme. And they were saying that the whole, the whole Brewdog is kind of bigger than just a brewery. Like there is a, I, I do respect that element about it. It's created a community about around beer, which I think is good. And that's what craft beer is all about. It's about the community. But the way that Brewdog have kind of screwed that community is really what um, puts salt in the wounds, if you like. So, yeah, um, it's, as I say, this whole thing, I'm really just not, I'm, I'm not surprised that the, the sheer extent of it and I think it would be kind of it would be justice to see brew dog hammered by the US uh, the US government for their import things but there is the statute of limitations there um, you know I'm curious to see I think one thing going forward that will be quite interesting is brew dog of course want to expand their Asia operations so it'll be interesting to see how they try and to see if they try and cozy up to the Chinese Communist Party and stuff you know because uh, obviously Brewdog were punk and they want to stand up for, you know, equality and all of this. And you think about the things that go on with, you know, Tibet and the Uyghurs and um, just general oppression in the in mainland China. Um, that's going to be interesting because Brewdog had expressed interest in making a brewery in, uh, I believe they had done it in mainland China at some point. Or although it might have been in Japan they were looking at it, I forget. So it's going to be interesting to see how Brewdog expand their Asia operations over the next while will they cozy up to the ccp and all of this kind of thing who knows um they've also got the brewery in australia these days too and as i say i think there's one in japan that is uh, that is planned so yeah um it's gonna be interesting to see what brewdog do over the next few years i think that james watt's ego is not going to allow him to step back from the company and um, although that would be massively massively beneficial to them so yeah, um, I do think that the si the silence from Martin Dickey is deafening. Martin, you were always a decent guy. I think you need to kind of step up and think about taking over Brewdog and starting to get them back on track. And from for me as a Scot, you know, it was quite exciting back in the day seeing Brewdog, a Scottish company, getting out there in the world. Um, that was a very exciting thing and of course the political situation in Scotland is very likely to change within the next five to ten years uh, you know I, I do reckon we're on the path to independence and so on but this video is not about politics um, it was exciting to see a Scottish company get out there but if you've got a company out there uh, out in the world who are saying we're from Aberdeen we're from Scotland it tarnishes the reputation of the country it tarnishes the reputation of other Scottish firms who are going to go out there and try and make a name for themselves. So you've got to think about this as well. Um, Brewdog, in a lot of ways, have given Scottish business a bad name because of a lot of these things that they've done. And that, for me, is that, that annoys me most. That really annoys me most. Whenever I, I, I've been very lucky to travel to a lot of different places and meet lots of different people and... People love Scotland. Uh, in my experience, people are very curious about Scotland. They love Scotland. But if you get a Scottish business going and doing stuff like this, um, it tarnishes that reputation. And we should be proud of that reputation that we have abroad. So that's another thing that Brewdog need to think about. 
Um, but yeah, the whole this whole thing goes back to James Watt, and it's it's um, he's got to shoulder that. He won't do it. I, I can tell you, his ego won't let him do it. Um, and you know, he's already trying to hide behind lawyers and things like that, which is uh, uh, it's it's a familiar place for him hiding behind lawyers, uh, from what I understand. So yeah, I think we can wrap up the video there. I have to say, just surprised. I said earlier a summary of this. Surprised at the extent of the stuff that's gone on with Brewdog. Um, I really feel sorry for the workers um, as well and the way that a lot of them have been treated. But uh, yeah, surprised at the misogyny side of things as well. Was, but we explained the reason for that earlier. But yeah, um, James Watt needs to go. He, he has to. He has to just step back from the company. He's got the means to be a silent partner. Martin Dickey take over. That's the best course of action for Brewdog. Um, but yeah, this I can see this uh, this documentary will have done a, a major major bit of damage to Brewdog, and it will have severely dented James's ego, and that will be why he's hiding behind the lawyers. So yeah, it's interesting. You could have said your piece, James, to the the documentary, and you're trying to say you've provided loads of evidence to others. Why you know you could make that evidence public. You could put it in the public domain. You could, you've got Brewdog's social media platforms, you could publish it, but you haven't. That speaks volumes. Although you might do it, you know, you never know. After this video, you might do it. Who knows? Maybe that's me being a bit egotistical. But yeah, he could publish all the evidence to counter this. He could make a detailed report and say, this happened, this happened, this happened. Will he do it? Absolutely not, because it will incriminate him legally. I can guarantee you so. You won't see any evidence of this um, because it will, if he tries to publish anything like that, no doubt his lawyers will be advising him, this could incriminate you on this, this could incriminate you on that. Um, we won't see. Brewdog will claim they've got evidence, but they won't. I don't think they'll ever make it public. So, yeah, that's that. So, yeah, Brewdog, <coughs> doing the tubes. Doing the tubes, I think, is the way to say it. But, yeah, this video really turned into, out to be a little bit of a rant, and I see we've gone for 36 minutes. Probably boring you guys by now, but yeah, uh, as I say, Brewdog, you know, having studied in, studied chemistry at Aberdeen, I love Aberdeen as a city. If I went back to Scotland, I would definitely consider living up there. Um, you know, it, it's just a real shame. It really is a real shame. And that's down to James Watt. So, James Watt, well done on all your shit, man. Really well done. Tarnished, the, tarnished Scottish businesses' reputation. Tarnished Aberdeen's reputation. Stand up guy, man. Stand up guy. But anyway, to those of you watching, thank you for your support of the channel. Let me know your own thoughts about this in the comment section below. And uh, yeah, keep keep your eyes peeled. I do actually have some uh, other brew dog beers to review. Uh, they're very old ones, actually. Ones that you can age for years, actually. And I think a few of them might well actually be out of date this year, 2022. So yeah, maybe I have to... Uh, look at reviewing some of them but those are in my garage uh, back home in Scotland so I'll have a look at the brew dog beers that I still have and we'll see what we can do about, uh, about reviewing some of those for you in the future but yeah that guys is my thought on brew dog or those are my thoughts I should say on brew dog and that documentary and thank you to Adam pardon me at Mayor's of Beers of course for giving me the idea to do this video I'll put the link to the um the other video from 2017 in the description below and you can check that out as well but in the meantime thank you for watching check out my social media don't check out brewdog social media don't give them any more support until james watt is gone and i'll see you guys in another review slanger skull cheers